Hello everyone, welcome to the Regency Academy YouTube channel. In this video, I am going to give you a brief analysis on the poem to the Nile by John Keats. So, when we pay our attention to the poem, John Keats is a prominent figure in the second generation of romantic poets. You all may know that he died at the age of 25 after suffering from a disease called tuberculosis. So here we find an interesting point. It is that his poems were published four years after his death. That means his biography was published after 30 years. Now you may be wondering the reason for it. So simply it was because of poetic criticism. So now you have an idea about the poem and therefore let's start analyzing the song. So it has 14 lines comprising of an octave and a sestet. That means it has been composed in the Petrarchian sonnet style. lines the Petrarchian sonnet style. So, son of the all moon mountains, Africa. This line shows us the origin of the river, or else we can say the birthplace of the river. According to this, the old moon mountains are its parents. The Nile River is divided into two. Okay, it's divided into two as the Blue Nile and the White Nile. So here, the river has been personified by the word sun. alliteration it is the repetition of the same letter. Okay, in the word moon mountains, we find this technique, and also we find the inversion technique. Here, the position of the adjective. Adjective is African. This has been inverted. Samaning adjective we kak n ne noun ne kete khali. Have I mentioned that? Eka bena swetir thamai have illa kiye. The next line. Chief of the pyramid and crocodile. So, this ancient Egyptians built pyramids. Okay, they built it to keep the tombs of their rulers, that means the dead bodies of their kings and queens, the people who ruled them. So, to make these pyramids, they had used big blocks. As you can see in the video, there are very big blocks too. So, to carry these blocks, they had to take the help of this river. Okay, the poet has mentioned about crocodiles. So it is said that the largest species of crocodiles are living in this river, on the banks of river Nile. So here we can see a contrast between the living and the non-living. Okay. Pyramids are non-living and crocodiles are living. Panatiyana Deval Saha Panatnati Deva. In a way we can say that uh, he has used the technique hyperbole and also the exaggeration technique. Ekyane metana tiyana mata vada adhyak apita me poet penna na hadala tiyana kiyala apita kiyana pulu. We call the fruitful and that very wild. Here, the means you. It's an old English term actually. Parana English vada dhikla vachinayata mai me tiyi kiyala kiyane. So here it is said we call you fruitful. So why is it fruitful? 
dry it's because of the fish harvest then they can use that water for agricultural activities and for transportation okay and it was a playground for water sports ithin me river ekey thiyena paladai bawa thama metane thi eya kiyanne lekin minissunta kochchara prayojana kunada kiya thama metane thi eya explain karala thiyena yaalage waga wan walata wattara labuna thawa bado hita me ekey ni yanna pulwan una me river eka gana then the next line a desert fills our scenes in word span so here what he says is that when we think about its fruitfulness our imagination is filled with the desert so what's that e kiyanne api meke thiyena paladayi bawa gena hitanthi anithathi ape hithe me kaanthare gena pinthura mavena so here we see a correlation between barrenness and fullness is lion which is nurse of what nation since the world began so this river you know it flows through nine countries here it's called the nurse of what nation so what is this nurse of what nation what nation can you call it oh what nation can it african countries world they are the dark nations or else we can say african countries ඉතින් මේ රිවර් එක තමයි මේ කන්ට්‍රීස් වල පෝෂණය කරලා තියෙන්නේ. එයාල ජීවත් වෙන්න උදව් කරන්නේ මේ රිවර් එක. So accordingly this has nourished not only one country. So it has done a very great service. Next line, are thou so fruitful? Are you so fruitful? So the poet is asking the river, are you so fruitful? ඔයා කියන තරම් ඵලදායි. ඔය are you cheating? At this point, the poet is questioned in the river. He is also asking, "Did you do a magical charm to make people venerate you?" Or a dana wa is there a minister? Or the egol na may rivers wala to goda respect kara. Ekhe ka pooja avan pavatwa. India wa ke countries wala ekka goda comment kara. Or the ite maya aha na wa. Did you do a magical charm? ियर you know the people had worked hard earlier okay rest for a space twist cairo and decan here cairo means the place where the river begins and decan in egyptian law means constellations so it means according to this line the river has a rest between the land and the skies ek yanne me decan kiyanne Egyptian language ki constellations constellations kiyana manada taru rata harida etakora mekan apita hitenne me ganga rest ekak ganne ahasai polawai nada kiyala metana we find a sort of inaccuracy in geography okay etama kiyana etatama me dikan kiyana plateau ekak thiyenne india wala actually it does not relate to it. okay so now you have guys have come to the end of the octave and please note the rhyme scheme it is a b b a a b b a next we find a change in tone that means the attitude changes here from reverence to realistic okay the attitude changes from reverence to realistic So let's move into the sister and see what it is. Oh, may dark fancies err. They surely do. So here, in the next line, dark fancies means imagination. It means that the imagination can mislead us. Ekya ne? Ape hithe mawa gan na devan. Ape bo no magya vana. Kya ne ke thamma metheni kids keela tiye. So here, what happens is. 
he criticizes his own habit eya eya gewa puruddha metena de viveshanaya karana eka passe avakada kane he explores it in an artistic view the most important fact here is that he addresses nile directly okay it's a characteristic characteristic of an old this ignorance that makes a barren waste of all beyond itself so in this line what happens is he thinks of his own ignorance the ignorance of others as most of them have dark fancies about pyramids and the nile river then we come across a special thing yeah it's the cadesian language ඒ කියන්නේ මේ පොයින්ට් එකේ ඉඳන් කීඩ්ස් මේ ගංගේ තියෙන ලස්සන වර්ණනා කරන්න පටන් ගන්න. He becomes sensuous here. He admires the river, its beauty. Okay? Beauty of the nature and the sound, smell, he admires those things. Then he proves that this poem is a nature poem. Thou dost bend you green rushes like our rivers and the stays Here Keats speaks about the river in the way it flows to its destination. Metanadi appe hite me ganga lassata galagana yana chitra pavena vidira thamai me poet liyala thiyenne. We can visualize it. So the technique visual imagery has been used here. Appe meka hite mawa ganna puluwa. E nisa metana ara visual imagery kiyana technique ekaka Keats use karala thiyena. The pleasant sunrise green isles hast thou too and to the sea as happily dust hails so here it's going to her destination the river is going to the sea it's flowing you see that the word green has been used right it's used more frequently so it highlights the lushness the fertile soil because of this fertile soil there have, plants have grown and it's very lush green කියන word එක මෙතනදි සරසාර බව තමයි වෙන්නම් කරන්නේ හරිද so here we find both visual and gustatory imageries so what is this gustatory imagery gustatory means taste so in the words pleasant sunrise pleasant sunrise කියන වචන වල visual and gustatory imageries blend වෙලා තියෙනවා එකට තියෙනවා hari so the rhyme in same scheme for the yesterday is cd 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 and we have completed the discussion of the most important points in the sonnet the sonnet and actually this would be a great help for you guys in your level examination and i must tell if you want any sort of support please leave a comment and i would definitely reply you thanks for watching.